in September. So if you're interested in joining that event, please let me know. I also have three others. There's going to be one at Celebration Station in uh, October. We're also having are helping with uh, Pumpkin Fest that's going to be on October 20th and the Mesquite Taste and Trade, which is going to be on October 23rd. So it's going to be very busy towards the end of the year. So if you're looking to promote your business, please give me I have applications for all of y'all. Awesome. I'm Linda Howard. I'm an independent Cincy family um, director, and I represent uh, Cincy Fragrance, Milana, and our newest brand, Grace Adele. And my goal is to use the beautiful line of handbags, um, and my goal is to make it a household thing, like Cincy Fragrance is. Linda Highwood, I've got parts. Awesome. Good. Good morning. My name is Mark Brent. I'm a marketing public relations for First Bank Bank. We're one of the few left home owned banks in North Texas. So if you get tired of your current banking situation, Mark Bryant, First Bank Bank. Thank you. November, right? Yes. I'm Shane Strong. I work with Surf Pro, Mesquite. We do fire, water loss, uh, restoration, mold mitigation, other types of cleaning services. Glad to be here. Great. Thank you. And our intern, Chelsea's here this morning. Come, Chelsea. Hey, Chelsea. Hey, Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> um, we got just a brief program. I want to just give you some updates uh, on uh, some city things and some chamber things that will be going on coming coming up. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, first on the city side, uh, Mayor Gordon will be hosting a town hall meeting on August the 23rd here at the Civic Center at 6:30. Uh, she will be giving several updates uh, as it relates to the city progression, and uh, we're asking all the can and will come out to that. Um, as far as the chamber, uh, I would like to introduce two of our four new board members that are here this morning. Mark Bryan from First State Bank is one. If he wave his hand to you again. Oh, Just voted in yesterday. <laughs> and Sharon told us we needed to put Dr. Douglas on the board, and so she was voted in yesterday too. <laughs> no, but uh, Eastfield has been a great partner for a number of years, and uh, we certainly want to continue to strengthen that. And we're Dissolated and excited that Dr. Douglas is joining us. Um, you probably are, we men have best are the two males of uh, this office. We printed everything on pink paper <laughs> some kind of way. We <laughs> yeah. on pink to the sky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, one of the handouts you should have is, is our business expo, which will be September the 13th. Um, it's going to be a double D ranch from 11 to 5. Still an opportunity to sign up, get a booth. Uh, we're going to have, for the first time this year, a mini taste, uh, thanks to uh, Miss Vicky and her hard work, and our best and his hard work, of putting together a mini taste that will go along with the expo. Uh, this year we're also going to have a, a networking uh, reception afterwards. Uh, Encore is going to sponsor that, and so it's planned to be bigger and better. We have AT&T coming out to uh, do some hot spots, so we can uh, have have an internet cafe while we're there. So we're excited about this year uh, uh, with the expo. And, and again, if you uh, would like to sign up, please see our investor or call the numbers on the flyer and we'll get you set up. I believe the registration for members is $50, non-members $100. Uh, but if you join, you know, we can negotiate some things if you are not a member. <laughs> um, just told you we, we uh, voted in uh, two of our board, two of our four also Coming along will be William Freeman. He is with the Water District uh, Number Six uh, here locally. And uh, who am I missing? Mark. Uh, I know it's four. Oh, Tammy. Tammy Lawson from Chase Bank. She changed her name. It was Tammy Carter. She got married. Nice Lawson uh, from Chase Bank uh, will be joining us as well. So we have a, a very strong board, and I'm excited to uh, let you know that the chamber is is aggressively uh, trying to move forward to bring uh, better education, uh, better workshops and seminars to you, better opportunities to network uh, so that your business grows and that and that's going to happen if we work together. Um, also in November uh, is our annual uh, awards gala and that's going to be at WD Ranch as well and that's an opportunity to highlight our business owners, our entrepreneurs, our city leaders, civic leaders um, and 
have a good time and have a party. The thing this year is all that jazz. Um, so we're looking for a good night of jazz and uh, the ladies get to do what they love to do is go shop for an after five cocktail dress. So we're going to have a good time. Um, last, um, just a few more things. I want to report to you the chamber is growing. Uh, year to date we have uh, 13 new members. Uh, we had our first annual golf tournament back in April and I'm happy to say we made money and didn't lose money, so that's good. Um, our annual job fair uh, was in May. Um, and just moving forward, some of the, the key things that you're going to be seeing, uh, we moved in uh, February to this location to take on the tourism, the CVB. So we've added a CV, uh, uh, visitors group to, to the chamber. And uh, so what you're going to see in the fall is, a, is the lunch of our tourism. And I'm really excited about that. We have... Uh, a number of uh, persons in the uh, city that's going to be on that advisory board committee, some of our restaurants, our, our hotel, the Keith Inn, jail over the Keith Inn. And what that's going to do is bring additional training, education, resources to the city as we drive uh, people to the city. It's just going to be another opportunity uh, for people in the community and the surrounding areas to see your businesses and see what you do best. And we're really excited about that. So stay tuned to that. And if you have any questions uh, about it, that, please uh, give myself a call. I'll have the call. I'm happy to uh, answer those questions. Is there any other special announcements citywide or anything that I'm uh, If you do have uh, some events or something you would like to uh, get announced, please email us. We'd love to share that in our luncheons. We have bi-weekly bi luncheons. We'd love to share that. Uh, you got a promotion going on at your business. We'd love to share that with our with our uh, members. I'm going to get off the floor. Are there any questions for me? Back to school oh, back to school. I wasn't going to be selfish. Go so back to school bash. The uh, Box Springs Community Back to School Bash and Marriage Diversity mm -hmm. Fair is this Saturday. Uh, I'm happy. Our church, Love and Grace, will be the hosting uh, church to to put it on. But it is a citywide event. We had five people pre-register last year. We had 180 pre-register this year. And so uh, we're, uh, we adopted Gray Elementary. Um, and just for those that uh, don't know the, the demographics, 85% uh, of those students are on free or reduced lunch. And what that means is they are at or below poverty level. And so the 880 so students, 85% of those are, are in need. And so our goal is to serve 1,200 students this year in back-to-school supplies. But the secret uh, is not just the supplies. We'll have a health expo that will be going on. We're going to have cooking demonstrations, uh, workout demonstrations. Um, I think there's some karate going on. We're going to do testing this year, glucose, cholesterol, uh, blood pressure check. Carter, uh, uh, Carter Blood Drive is coming out to, to do blood. It's, and then we have the fun stuff for the kids. So it is a major event for the city and we, we certainly applaud the city for continuing to allow us to work with them and partner uh, with them to do so. Uh, there is a little competition going on between me and Mayor Gordon. Uh, we are raising dollars for the city uh, youth scholarship fund and uh, there's a dunking booth. Uh, whoever, raises, whoever raises the most money or whoever gets dunked the most <laughs> wins. And she's been talking a little trash uh, at city council meetings. Uh, I don't think she's going to do it. She's probably not going to want to get her hair wet, but tell her I said that. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's a friendly competition going on. Uh, myself and Sam Allen did it this year. I challenged the mayor last year, and, and she stuck to her word. And so uh, come out, buy some tickets, get the dunk the mayor, and get the dunk the past. There you go. We can't beat that. Um, yes, ma'am. If we're unable to be there, is it possible for us to get items to you? Yes, by yes, yes, by Friday. Uh, certainly, if you wish to make a donation via cash or, or supplies, uh, we're collecting supplies at the Recreation Center. Uh, if you're doing a check, uh, see me. Uh, we'll make it out to either the city or Love and Grace, and we'll make sure we get to, uh, to the respective place. Before we end, I have, we have a new member. She's here. I'll let her announce her business, Cash Max, on late June. Uh, just open up what I think a month or so ago. This is Patricia. I let her introduce herself. But we're going to have a uh, two, possibly three business. We've been cutting, so keep your ears open. 
on the 22nd of this month, which is on the Wednesday. Cash Max and La Chocolata, possibly GameStop, they're all in the same retail strip. Uh, and also, we'll keep your ears open as well. Panda Express has opened up an awesome facility at the end of this month. We're going to have a VIP celebration prior to opening. So keep your ears open. We definitely want to welcome everybody into the city. So I think that's it for me. That's our best to hear. Introduce our honored guests and speaker of the, of the day. All right, I think she can speak for herself. Uh, we're just happy to have her. It's Jennifer Bagley. Uh, come on up. She's going to talk about business and what we can do to grow our business. So if you'll give her a hand, please. Promoter 
or influencer. Promoter or influencer. As you move, see. Okay, you guys actually, you can, you can grab a seat. You're going to get a seat right over here. All right, if you find yourself. Promoter and influencer. Okay, if you find yourself more informal and go with the flow, raise your hand. Those are my supporters. Come over here, please. Supporters. I already knew that by your title and your position, lady, and the way you took care of me when I came in. <laughs> All right, so over here we should have informal and go with the flow. Our supporters should be sitting over here. Right here we should have formal, yes, however more go with the flow. Perfect, yep, you're right there anywhere on this side. Over here, we have you and you alone. <laughs> Continue. Less of people just don't want to play, like you in the back. Alright. <laughs> you're on the right side? Fantastic. This is the deal. In business, do you think it's important to know how who you're working with, who you're selling to, who you're operating with, how they function, how they think? Is that important? So what happens if I have a dominant person, Derek, I need you with me. Derek, if you walk into your office and you walk by a supporter and you don't say good morning, you don't say hello, you don't ask how their weekend was, do you know what that does to them? It does. Think something's wrong, right? You're instantly, what happened? He's mad. What did I do? Is it important for you to know that? It is important. It is important. Think about this. In business, everything that we do typically resides around how you think yourself. When it comes to marketing, the majority of business owners make their marketing decisions based on their own personal interests their own personal life, how they think it works. So what happens if you do that? You're the biggest, right in here, you have the worst case scenario. If you only operate based on how you think, how you function, how you operate, what you like, what you don't like, who are you eliminating? The whole room, it looks like. The whole room. You're the best example I've ever had. The entire audience. The entire audience. Think about that when it comes to marketing. Think about that when you get in conversations with somebody about marketing, building a business, growing, using social media, leveraging Facebook. Have you ever seen somebody give their opinion on whether social media works or doesn't work? Guess whose opinion matters? Everyone else. First thing, first rule of all marketing is your opinion doesn't matter. It doesn't unless you only want to sell to yourself. You're going to be broke. <laughs> for lack of a better term. That would be an issue in this situation. If the only thing that you do is concentrate on what you like and how you operate, it's going to be a lonely world. Everything in business is changing. The way we communicate, the way we interact, the way we engage, the way we evaluate, the way we research. Everything in business is changing. You agree? Anybody have any children? 13 or under? You ever seen a toddler with an iPhone? They think you're slow. <laughs> Real slow. Yes? Yes. It was very interesting. I have a, um, one of the ladies that builds websites for us, Rose. Her son is three. And uh, Aaron came up to my MacBook Air and started moving the screen. He is instantly upset because my screen won't move on a MacBook. $3,000 computer. But to him, that's slow. Imagine handing him a magazine or a newspaper. How does their brain operate with that? We have an interesting situation because we sit on this pendulum right now. We sit on a pendulum of who we are, where we came from, and what's coming next. A lot of times I'll ask businesses, I'll ask them, what do you think about the kids as they're coming up? They'll say, oh, they're my future customer. No. They are your future competitor. And if you plan on being in business for the next three years, raise your hand. You got to deal with 16-year-olds. Next five years, raise your hand. Got to deal with 10-year-olds. My son is 13 years old, and he has a larger network than this audience combined. If I were to have a competition, and I said, can I use your facility? All of you against him. On Saturday, we're going to have an event. I need a few pizzas and a skateboard giveaway. 
Guess who built this room faster? Who do you think? He will. And you know he won't make one phone call. Without making one phone call. It's interesting because I listen to a lot of young social media experts and so forth, and they'll talk about whether you should use Facebook or LinkedIn or Dig or Doug or Twitter and so forth. Technically, it doesn't matter. I love the fact that I'm a speaker, and I also love the fact that I came from logistics operations and supply chain industry. I didn't have to get retrained. I didn't come from an advertising background, so I don't think like an advertiser. So I would rather get my data from what? A marketing and advertising company or from you? From you. I would rather listen to a group of soccer moms all day long than listen to a professional advertising company. When I ask how do you buy, how do you research, how do you make your buying decisions, that's what matters to me. In large audiences, and I will tell you, from audiences of 1,000 to 10, in every business across the nation, age doesn't matter, business doesn't matter, industry doesn't matter, individuals do. We are no longer in a position where we are doing business to business, business to consumer. Everything that we do is person to person. Vice president to vice president, CEO to CEO, CFO to CFO, sales to sales, customer service to customer service. We're in a new environment where we have to think about how people interact with each other, how people communicate. We also have to think about the fact that as business owners and sales professionals, how many of you consider yourself in sales? Did everybody raise their hand? Do you have kids? You're in sales. Do you have a husband? You're better than you think. Right? Okay. <laughs> so now, everyone is in sales. We've got to learn that we hurt ourselves in our own marketing efforts. We hurt ourselves in our own business because half of everything that you do stems from your mindset. Half of everything that you do stems from preconceived thoughts and notions and ideas and concepts that have been ingrained in you since birth. Whether it's fear, fear of technology, fear of change, not wanting to change how you think, how you act, how you, how you perceive information. Business is going to be broken down into three components. Go ahead and put that um, piece of paper over into one of, the, one of the corners. We'll catch up with here as we go. I forgot about that. <laughs> All right. Three components. One, do you have the right technology? The infrastructure of how you market your business depends on having the right technology. So just take an open corner, any open corner. So you're going to have it look like a half sheet. You're looking for an open spot. There you go. And write down the words behavior, technology, and strategy. Behavior, technology, and strategy. Without these three components, you're going to be trying to sit on a two-legged stool. Without the right technology, you're not going to be able to move quickly. You're not going to be able to replicate yourself. You're not going to be able to leverage the internet to be able to reach people. Let me ask you, in the last 12 months, how many of you have made a purchase and you are not an existing customer from either magazine, television, radio? Raise your hand. One purchase, you are not an existing customer. What did you buy? Personal <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anyone else? So that's one year, one person, one purchase. All right, now we'll go into from a brochure, a door hanger, a billboard, or an advertisement. You made a purchase because you saw one of these items and it convinced you to make a purchase. Anyone raise your hand? What'd you buy? Well, a lawn service. A lawn service? Fantastic, absolutely. Anyone else? Once in a while, we'll get an oil change or some pizza. Guess what happens if you go to school for marketing today? Guess what you learn to do? You learn this. That's how you learn to market and advertise your business. You notice you get into, into business and all of a sudden you start looking at how other people are advertising. You start looking at their brochures and their flyers and their postcards, their door hangers, their advertisements and their messaging and their ads and everything else. But I just asked you how you buy and you had two people raise their hand with one purchase for an entire year. Is that healthy for business? Sometimes we need to slap ourselves and stop. <laughs> we have to stop. Because we do things that don't make sense. How many of you have made a purchase because you received a referral to another product or service from a friend or a trusted family member or business colleague in the last 12 months? Raise your hand. All right. And how many of you Google them first? How many of you Google them first? Okay. I want you to be very careful. 
Actually, you know what? Let me finish this. How many of you made a purchase because of the internet in the last 12 months? How many of you made a purchase on the internet in the last 12 months? Raise your hand. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. People make their buying decisions two ways. That was it. And I'm telling you, I can ask any audience, anywhere, anytime, how they buy. They buy because of one, referrals from people they know, like, and trust. And two, they buy because of research, education, and connections digitally on the internet. However, for those business owners who are trusting in the fact that referral business is going to tie them over and that's how they're going to do business forever, I challenge you on that. The reason is, when I ask how many of you have received a referral, hands go up. When I ask how many of you Google that product or service first, hands went up. The next question is how many of you didn't call because you either A, couldn't find them, B, there was negative information, or C, you couldn't figure out who was who. Those numbers are increasing very, very, very quickly. So, if those are the two ways that people buy, they make buying decisions, via referral and via technology, via the internet, and you're not properly positioned on there, is that a problem? If we think it's a problem now, wait five years. Wait three. A lot of times we spend our time researching, I'm put my toe in the water, I'm going to get a feel for how it feels, and then I might move. We have a new set of communication, a new set of communicators, a new set of technology that's coming in, but they don't know anything different. My son doesn't make phone calls. He Facebooks. And you know what? Three months ago, four months ago now, I couldn't figure out why he wasn't uh, liking my Facebook posts or communicating with me on Facebook anymore. He's like, Mom, aren't you a social media expert? I'm wondering on Facebook anymore. This is for old people. Yeah. We're on Instagram. Yeah, that's what I said. Huh? So if we have an entire population of children that just moved from cell phones to a different device, and they communicate an entirely different device, and as a mother, supposedly a social media person, I don't know, that's a problem. That is a problem, because that's how they influence, that's how they connect, that's how they convert, that's how they communicate entirely. So, technology is critical. How many of you have a website? Okay. Sometimes I see business owners starting to um, migrate towards, well, maybe I should stay in the social environment versus a website. This is the problem with that. You don't own social media networks. You don't own Facebook. You don't own Twitter. It also, when you publish content to it, has a duration of, of longevity for your business that's about this long. As soon as new content is posted, your content is gone. In a website slash blog environment, you own it. That's yours. That's a permanent asset to the business. So I talked a little bit earlier about how behavior can throw us off in a marketing environment. What do you think the number one excuse for business owners is as to why they don't get involved in social media, blogging, uh, digital marketing, search engine optimization, anything like that? Right. I don't have enough time. So check this out. This is, we'll, we'll give the best example. I have two ways I can use this hour. I can come here and I can just talk and I can spend an hour with you guys. How long would that hour last? Hour. Depends on my follow-up, maybe a little bit longer. Or I can leverage technology to digitize it. There, there, and there. Now, if I upload this video into YouTube, and I upload uh, 10 videos from that one dissect into YouTube, and I take those videos and I optimize them and I publish them on a blog on my website that has a call to action form on it, and when I put them on my blog, I auto-publish those out to every social media network, because I don't care what people like, wherever they are, I'll go. Now how long does my hour last me? Forever, and what does it do over time? It grows. It grows. If you are spending your time in a sales environment communicating one-on-one, -on -one, how long does it last you? Each of you are subject matter experts in your business. If you want to grow the membership for the organization, you've got to digitize your message. You're going to have to add value and learn how to leverage technology to digitize your message. There are too many ways. It's too inexpensive. It's free to be able to use a lot of these technologies. Right now, we're on Google Hangout. It's live on air, playing on Google, uh, excuse me, on YouTube. As soon as this saves, it's going to auto-publish to YouTube. It's already in YouTube. Took two seconds, had to hit one button to set it up. It's absolutely free technology. How many, how many of you are on Google Plus? Okay, write that down. You need to do that. <laughs> how many of you have a Gmail account? Let's back up a little bit. All right. Uh, so, if you have a Gmail account, you need to set up a Google, a Google Plus page for you personally as well as for your business. 
Once you're in the Google Plus environment, you have the ability to use something called a Hangout, which is what this is. It's an easy way to record your message. It's also an easy way to communicate with each other. We have business calls with our clients and colleagues all the time, and it's face-to-face -face because you're using video chat in order to be able to do that. You can record instantaneously. How many of you answered the same question day in and day out in sales? Genius. You know why you don't have enough time? Because you're answering the same question over and over again. Now, if you were to take those questions, centralize them, and then digitize them in answers that are video-based, now what do you have? More time. Must leverage technology to replicate. So the reason we have three things on here, one, technology. If you're operating in a static website, it doesn't work. Those are brochures. Those are advertisements. We already got our numbers on advertisements. Google cares about three things. Are you relevant? Are you current? And are you trusted? One, are you relevant? Relevant is are you labeling content and information based on what you want to be found for. So if you want to be found for your local city or businesses in your local city or relocation or commercial, business development, education, um, business networking, you're going to have to have content on your website that specifically is labeled that way, preferably in a blog environment, not on a static website. In order for you to even know whether or not your website performs, you're going to have to get some, a little bit of expertise. If you're going to buy a house, you want to know how mortgage back points and stuff work, right? How interest rates work. Well, in a digital environment, you've got to know what kind of websites perform, what kind of websites don't perform. If you buy a template, if it's fast, easy, or free, my guess is it's also invisible to Google. Fast, easy, or free, probably invisible to Google because they're built in what's called tables. Think about this. Google has made over 50 updates in the last week. If GoDaddy made a website building tool three years ago, do you think it works well now? If Google made changes, 50 changes in the last week, probably not. So anything that is template-based, flash-based, fast, easy, or free, probably is not visible. But you've got to at least look. I've seen people invest in, in optimization and time and resources and efforts into things that can't even be crawled by Google. That would be a problem for a business owner. So the technology is going to be critical. Now, strategically, you've got to have an execution plan. We are going to, how many minutes do I have? And how fast can you click? All right, are you guys want to go through um, a, a sales supply chain strategy very fast that literally will outline how you need to set up the infrastructure of your business in one process? Yes? But we're going to go very fast. So this is what I know. Everybody on this side, you hate it when I talk too fast. Everybody on this side, you're like, I love her. <laughs> <laughs> so, y'all be nice to me when you get the survey at the end. Don't circle off threes, please, because I already know you want me to slow down, but we have 15 minutes and I can't. And you guys were fine. You'll circle all five. All right, now, we're going to go very, very quickly. It's important that I know who I'm talking to, yes? All right, we're going to go very quickly. First one, go ahead and open those sheets up, turn it over to the other side. We're going to go through. The sales supply chain. There actually is a process to generating sales. There's a map. We're going to go through this roadmap. You're going to get my scratch notes because I don't care about the paper that it's written on. I just care about the process and that we go through it together. Okay, first thing. You've got to understand where source. The source of new business. Go ahead and write source in that top one, number one top. Do you need a pen? I think so. on me all the time. All right, source is first. Oh, we're going to go fast. Alright, first thing is strategic partnerships. A lot of times we hunt for business. You've got to, got, got to, got to know and be able to identify good strategic partners. This is somebody who sells to the exact same ideal client base, but they sell a different product or service. A lot of times we're always hunting for clients. This is the deal. As business owners, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, sales professionals, you will be more powerful tenfold as a team than you will individually. Sometimes we get so caught up in working on our own and it's mine, mine, mine. Forget the mine, mine, mine. You have to think about operating in a blue ocean. This is not a red sea. There is plenty of business for anybody, anywhere. If you spend, spend your time thinking about competition, who's going to steal your ideas, who's going to find out who you're doing business with, you cannot do business if you crawl under a rock. So get over it. Leave it alone. Right now it's time to get out there, be public, be open, and leverage technology to do that. All right, next. Network events. You're here. Step one, you got to look for strategic partnerships, not always just be here to, to sell. You know when you've been to a networking event and people are jamming their cards down your throat? You're kind of, 
have, right? Look for partnerships. Look for how can you collaborate. If you have a database full of people I want to do business with and vice versa, we got to figure out how we can endorse each other. A great way to do that is digitally. A great way to do that is online. Next, customers. Your existing customers should be your number one source of new business. Why? The trust factor. They know your products and services. They know exactly how you operate. They should be your number one source. However, new customers don't just refer. You must add value continuously before, during, and well after the transaction. So this is when you get into a resource leveling issue. If I have one sales representative and 50 customers and I have to continue to add value to those customers over time after I've already taken their money and that transaction is closed, how do you do that when you need to add new revenue? This is where technology is critical. You've got to find where they operate, how to add communication and value to them by leveraging blogs, social media, staying in front of them using those tools. You can continue to build those relationships without having to add more resources. Does that make sense? All right, next. Social media. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Dig, Doug, StumbleUpon. This is the deal. There's 350 different social media accounts. You can go to a site called Namecheck, N-A-M-E-C-H-K.com. Social media plays a couple different roles. One, it can give you more real estate on Google. Just simply by owning your URL or your handle. We said earlier that when you're getting referral business, people are going to Google, they're, they're checking your name, they're checking your company. If they can't find you, that's a problem. So in order for you to own more real estate on Google for your name, your brand, your company, your organization, by leveraging social media networks, you can build a powerhouse um, network of sites that will take up more space for your brand. You've seen what a handle is, twitter.com forward slash your name. You can leverage handles of many different social media sites. The other thing that social media does is it helps with Google build trust. Hey, I said earlier, Google cares about three things. One, are you relevant? That's how you're labeling information. If you don't put those labels in there, Google won't find you. Second one is, are you uh, current? Okay, that has to do with are you communicating on a frequent basis. If you're not online and you're not adding content on a regular basis, somebody else is. Guess who gets found? The one who talks a lot. And the last one is, are you trusted? Social media gives you the ability to get thumbs up, endorsements, and testimonials from other people. You seen that little Google Plus button? The share, like, repost, retweet? That's what that is. It's a digital endorsement. More powerful than a written testimonial online. All right, next, PR. We'll slide, slide through that one. You guys right now, you get letters from customers that say thank you or great job. It, it kills me when I see a business owner take that letter, put it laminated, or drop it on a thing on their wall. Take a picture of it, upload it to a social environment. Digitize it, make it permanent, make it viewable by others. Alright? Next, video. That's what we're doing here. Video is critical. You have two audiences when it comes to marketing. One, Google. Google cares about text have to be able to crawl text. However, people, in this room, if I give you the option to read a blog or watch a video, how many of you choose watch a video? Raise your hands and look around. How many of you are leveraging video in your marketing efforts right now? Okay, now turn around and watch. How many of you would rather watch a video than read a blog or read an article? Raise your hand and look around. How many of you are using it in your marketing? We have problem, Houston. Uh -huh. Okay, real people will tell you how to market to them. They just did. This entire room just told you how they want to be communicated with. So we can't wait. All right, next. Education. That's what this is about. If you're not educating people, someone else is. You said that you answer the same questions day in and day out. That's what education is. Digitize that. All right? Next, search Google. Google is God. Okay, everything, everything and anything happens in this one place, right? You've got to be positioned there. You've got to for your own name, your own brand, your own company, your own products, your name, your sales team's name. You've got to be positioned properly online. All right? Let me explain how Google works real quick um, because I think a lot of people overcomplicate it. So I want you to, how many of you have seen um, Bruce Almighty? Have? Okay. So you remember when he goes upstairs into that big warehouse and he says, God says, I have your entire life, everything you've ever thought, everything you've ever dreamt, everything you've ever said or seen in this file for That is Google. When you go type something into Google, all you're doing is accessing this huge filing system, this drawer full of papers. You want to be in, the, in that drawer? 
guess what you have to add? You have to add files. You have to add papers. If you want to be found for XYZ, if you don't have any content on your site that's talking about XYZ, you're not going to get found. Also, you can use Google on a regular basis. Most website owners love this page called Our Services. So think about that Google is your administrative assistant. And if you create a page that says Our Services and it says we do landscaping and curb appeal and pools and irrigation and blah, blah, blah. Where's my landscaping? Is that you? Did you do it again? Air conditioning. Okay, so if you do server rooms, air conditioning, ductless, um, HVAC, plus you do, um, we'll keep going, spot cooling and so forth. If you put all that on one page and you hand it to an administrative assistant, how is that administrative assistant going to file that? They can't, right? One page, one thought. Number one rule online. One page, one thought. It can't get filed into a drawer if you put too much on it. So if you do one that's only HVAC, that's only, um, is it Bob Springs? Bob? Sure. Bob. I, you're just going to let me butcher it? Yeah. Okay, so if you do your city and then HVAC company, that's it. Don't put more than that, all right? So people also, they look by contractor, or they look by company, or they look by service provider, and so forth. So you have to think one page, one thought. All right, blog, better listings on Google. If you're operating a website, websites rule, blog rule. Okay, blogs allow you to continually add content to the internet and communicate. They also have what's called an RSS feed that allows you to easily communicate and connect to all the social media sites. Important? Yes. In this room, how many of you use Facebook? Raise your hand and look around. How many of you use Twitter? Raise your hand and look around. How many of you use YouTube? Raise your hand and look around. How many of you use LinkedIn? Raise your hand and look around. So, what do you need to use? Oh, all right. And first thing you have to do is listen. Right now, when you're sitting down and you're listening to those questions, you've got to document those questions. Next, on the right-hand side, answer. You're not answering, somebody else is. Digitize those answers. Next. In the center, everything surrounds communication. Your communication has got to occur four different ways. Why? Because there's four different quadrants of people in here that all like to be communicated with differently. Live, digital, video, text, audio. Digital video assistant. If you're not using all four, what are you doing? You're being dominant and you're not communicating with the rest of the world. <laughs> All right, next, in the very, very center, websites and blogs are designed for two purposes. One is to connect, two is to convert. Connect with new potential prospects by providing information, answers, and education, and convert. Convert them into a customer. If you stay in a social media environment, I've gone to people's Facebook pages and all I see is links to 300 other people's websites, where all you do is share content from other people's websites. That's not smart. Why? You're sending your prospects everywhere but home. The only place people convert is on home, on your website. So you've got to really, really think about the very center core of your voice. It has to be your blog slash website, content in the middle, goes out to the external site, and comes home to convert. When it comes home, you're looking at qualification. You've got to be able to quickly drop people into buckets. Now, if you get good at this, if you lay the infrastructure strategically, technically, and behaviorally, you will not wonder where your business is coming from next year. You will not wonder where it's coming from five years from now. You will eat off the silver platter. I don't have to have a sales team of 100. Because I have 10,000 videos out there that are selling for me constantly all the time. They're educated. By the time somebody calls my office, typically they've watched 10 to 15 of our videos and they just want to know how much can they get in the pipeline. They're not asking 100 questions because that was already there. They've already made that connection. Would that be good for your business? Yeah, would it save you some time? It won't it'll stop wearing out your shoes. <laughs> Is that important? Yes, ma'am. All right. So qualification can occur virtually. It can also occur live. People must be dropped into some type of a CRM solution. Familiar with the CRM? So CRM is Contact Relationship Management. Some people refer to that as Outlook. 
not going to work. So, a customer or a contact relationship management system will allow you to manage leads and opportunities by source. You know how many marketing professionals make decisions about a particular uh, marketing style without having any data? And they start, their, they start their sentences with, I think Facebook won't get me business. I think Twitter is not going to generate business for me. I think I get business this way. I think that doesn't work. If you don't leverage technology to manage how your business comes to you, what converts, what doesn't convert, what size of clients do you like, how frequently do you get clients from, from a, where you spend your effort in time or money or resources, if you don't measure that, how are you going to get smarter next year? How are you going to improve year over year over year if you don't have the data to be able to validate that when I spend my time here, it produces X. When I spend my time here, it produces Y. I don't want to be at X. Okay? So, a CRM. People are going to fall into one of four different categories. Number one is a list. Lists are, are relatively important because people are at a point where they are doing more research now than ever. A lot of times we're trying to catch people right at the buying decision. We need to stop doing that. We need to catch them much earlier than that, from strategic partnerships, relationship building, communication. If you catch them in the education process and build those relationships, those lists are going to be very important to your business. Think about it this way. If, um, if I come here and speak, and you guys grab a business card of mine, and you go put it in your drawer at home, and some of you might even send me an email, which I get about 3,000 emails a day. Not a good idea. <laughs> you can send it. It can take a minute, though. But some of you might even send me an email and say, thank you. What, what value does that give to you? Very little. What if you were to connect with me on Facebook, which happens to be, that's me. Facebook is where I do the majority of my communication. That's where the majority of my connections are. That's where I'm able to communicate the most effectively. What if you were to connect me there? When, what do you have access to then? My conversations, what else? My entire network. You have access to my entire network. Most importantly, if you publish great content, you have my attention. Right now, the speed of life is killing us. Do you agree? The speed of life has you moving at a rate that is so fast. Right now, just in the hour that I've been here, my guess is I've probably received around 150 emails. Probably have four to 20 text messages sitting in there. Probably have 60 so LinkedIn messages in my box. I probably have 30 Twitter messages in my box. I probably have five to 15 direct messages on my Facebook account and 30 public messages on my Facebook account in the hour that I've been here. Is that an issue? So. <laughs> Ouch, huh? You have a headache right now. So, it is very important that you leverage technology that people, the other person likes in order to stay in front of them. Got to stay in front of them. Alright, so people are going to fall on a list or they're going to convert to a lead. A lead is anybody that's been referred to you, came in off a website, off a lead form, and so forth. If there's been no qualification, then it's a lead. Next is an opportunity. An opportunity means that you have done some type of qualification. You qualify who the users are who holds the purse strings, maybe who a champion is, who's the authority in making the purchase. Might be the husband that has the money, but it might be the female who's going to make the decision, yes, or whatnot, or vice versa in a lot of cases. So it's important for you to go through a proper qualification process. And then lastly, you're going to convert to a customer. When you're able to measure by source, how many opportunities, how many customers, how many leads, how many list items, are produced from every single source, what is that going to allow you to do next year? Streaming. Say it again. Say it louder. Follow-up. Follow-up. What? Streamline. What else? Grow. What else? How about reallocate your efforts? Reallocate. Change your plan. Part of this is creating a plan. The second piece of it is measuring the plan. The third piece of it is change. Change swiftly and continue the process, okay? So create the plan, implement the plan, evaluate the plan, and then modify the plan so you get better and better and better results over time. Is this helpful? Okay, so this is the deal. Everything breaks down into, are you ready for change? It's quite possible I'll leave here and you won't connect with me on Facebook, and I'm sorry if that's the case. Because I have a lot of connections I'd love to be able to help. 
The second thing is, is you may have taken a lot of great notes and it seems like too much or overwhelming. How many people are there? It's okay. So, you have a couple choices. A, you can take those notes, but if you're not using Google Plus, get it set up. Do one thing at a time. Surround again. Well, I have a thought. Yes, please. I want to I have a confession. Come on. <laughs> no, no, seriously, I've been very stuck with the social media thing, thinking that I can just get out there because I'm a people person and just, I love hands-on. Yeah. But you really kind of opened up my eyes today about this. <laughs> you know, be more effective if you can just kind of master the social media, you know, reach more people than get in the car and make this uh, kind of Feature value. Yeah, so I appreciate uh, you kind of laying that out there where I can clearly understand how to be more effective. That is great feedback. Great feedback. Good confession. Now, what are you going to do about it? Can you hear me? I'm going to ask you. What are you going to do about it? Please take more hands. Anyone else? Say that again. Uh, my Facebook, if you just look for Jennifer Bagley. So it's um, uh, facebook.com forward slash and it's ms Jennifer Bagley. Okay. Or you can go to jennifervagley.com and there's a link right at the top to all of them. Yes, sir. It's a video today. The video today. Good question. Those will be, yeah. So first of all, you can access um, the video from here on Google Hangout. Or, uh, Google Hangout. You can access it from YouTube if you write down youtube.com forward slash D net live. D N E T live. L I V E. You can access this video. Those will be uploaded. Don, can I make a commitment for you? When he gets to them. <laughs> okay. Um, but this one you can access right away. Is it uh, where I was going to my, my dumb, yes. dumb and informed questions? Uh, so take me up on the target. Absolutely. You can copy the link, share it. Please do. I would absolutely love that. Um, after this, we are going to have that video camera. Uh, propped and ready. If you are interested, we'll help you get a kickstart into getting over if you have any fears about being on camera. If you would like, we would love to have you uh, meet with Don at the very end and um, we'll do a quick um, video, have you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your company and then let us know what you thought of today, how it impacts you, what you thought you might do differently um, and so forth, questions you might have. But we'd love to have that. We will dissect those and we'll send them out to our network to help get you some more exposure and so forth. So please do that. All of you guys have a um, half sheet of paper. This is our little uh, survey form. So if I talk too fast, you guys are going to circle three, I know, and you're all fine. <laughs> if you would be so kind as to fill this out, we have a couple things that we've offered um, the chamber that we can do for you. One is if you feel like, oh my gosh, right now I need help, then there's a little 911 box. Check that 911 box. We do a lot of speaking, so it allows us to prioritize who we need to set up a consultation with first. If you're just interested in getting on our schedule and having a consultation, absolutely complimentary on how what we went over today applies to you, your business, how you might be able to leverage it, please check the free consultation. And then in addition to that, at the very end, there's eight categories of um, education that we provide as a company, and we actually have over 100 different categories, but if any of those interest you, I think the Chamber would love to know um, what you guys are interested in and getting more information on. I know this is a lot of information in a short amount of time, so it kind of feels like drinking from a fire hydrant. So please fill these out. I have Keith Morales here, Michael Bellwell, Kathy Marshall, and John Purdom, and any of them are here to help you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay, I just have a couple of announcements. I know that we can uh, give Jennifer a bigger round of applause than that. Okay, I hope I don't mess this up. Uh, if you uh, will go to CI Workshop.